Hi guys, I hope you are doing well today. Um, thanks for being here. My name is Carrie. I am your facilitator of our community space here. It's a Facebook group called Becoming Artist Strong. Welcome if you are new to this space. Uh, if you are not new, thanks for being here and sticking around. This is going to be one of many workshops that I now host inside this space. So this workshop is all about feedback and art critique, and we're going to get into those discussions and questions in a minute. But I want to give people a chance to sign on and join us live, and I want to kind of lay the land, so to speak. I'm using a software called StreamYard, so I can't comment and type into the comments area. I'll only be able to read your comments, and it won't give me your name when you comment unless you give StreamYard permission. So I'll read the comments out loud and respond, but unfortunately I won't know who it is unless you type your name in the comment itself. But do feel free to say hello. You are most welcome to ask questions as you have them live, and I will make sure to do my best to answer them before we wrap up the workshop. And I want you to understand I'm gonna be hosting this workshop once a month inside this space. There will still be replay access, so this live will just stay and exist in the group. But as we do this workshop, you might have specific questions, you might have different thoughts about what you want support with, and I want to be able to build and adjust content each month to accommodate your needs. So that means you're gonna to need to tell me what you, what else you wanna hear from me about, what else can we discuss? Good evening, thank you for being here. So uh, today um, we're gonna to talk about critique. This is a word that so many people think is like this nasty, terrible word that means all we're doing is looking for the things wrong with your art. That is not true. And in fact, um, that's harmful to an artist. It's not going to actually help and serve you become a better artist. And that is the entire point of an art critique. The word critique is actually a synonym for feedback and feedback is information. All of these words are kind of interchangeable when I'm having this conversation. And I want you to start thinking about it all as information that you get to sift through. When you sift through things, you discard some and keep others. You get to choose that. And I want you to feel empowered to do that. And I also want you to feel empowered to trust yourself and your intuition because you really do know what's best for your art. The idea is, is if you really want to continue to grow, if you want to challenge yourself and learn and keep building your skill and developing and refining your voice, feedback is an, an integral and necessary step for that to happen. So I have um, a bit of a slideshow that's um, pieced from another workshop that I have that I want to share with you right now. And then I'll go into a few other pieces of information and then we'll kind of wrap up for today. And uh, like I said, I hope that in the future you will also tell me the things you're looking to understand or learn more about. Also, in future episodes of this feedback workshop, I would like to, instead of using the examples that I have in this slideshow today, I would very much prefer to use actual work from the community. So if you have artwork that you would like feedback on, uh, I will have a post that shows up in advance telling you when the workshop's coming. Below that, when that announcement is made, you can post images of your work and I'll select some of the work from those comments to use as examples in the next workshop. So. I hope that gives you guys a little bit of lay of the land. I'm gonna get our slideshow going here so you can kind of see uh, what we're talking about here. So let me just try to, I'm trying to get my screen set up so I can still see everything I need to see. Okay, so um, I think that a lot of people, when they hear the word art critic or critique, they see this kind of face staring down at them and judging them. It feels like someone is out to get you. It feels like all that people are doing is trying to pick apart everything that's wrong in your work and never even looking at anything you're doing right. That is completely false. Though I will admit there are art schools who use this strategy and even pride themselves in ripping apart people and um, seeing who kind of sticks it out because it's so hard and so mean, who, who makes it. Who do you think that really serves? 
that kind of behavior is a power play. It's not actually in service of anyone who's creative and trying to make better art. So that is not the kind of critique we do in this community. I will never support, condone, or encourage that kind of environment for any, any learning environment. That's why people like the Jealous Curator, Danielle Krissa, I don't know how many of you listen to her podcast, Art for Your Ear, but she talks openly about how she went to art school and on her last day before she was graduating, a professor told her she should never pick up a paintbrush again. And it took 15 years before she did. And I know so many people in this community and friends who have similar stories. I'm hoping workshops like this will help you feel more empowered to both practice giving feedback to others, and also figuring out what feedback's meaningful and useful to you so that you might improve your art. And we can also discuss the whole, how do we heal if we have been traumatized by someone who has said horrible, horrible things to us? I mean, I don't know how to, how do I get my next slide? Um, Sorry, I'm struggling here. <laughs> How do I get to my next slide, please? Struggling. I guess I'm gonna need my navigator here. Okay. I really want you to understand here that when I'm talking about feedback and critique, it is truly about sourcing information. Information feels non-threatening, right? Information is something that you look up and it's useful. That's a key piece of this conversation. When you offer feedback to someone or when you're taking in feedback, ask yourself, how is this information they're sharing with me useful? If someone says that they like your work or if someone says that they don't, how does that actually help you decide if your work's finished? How does that help you decide if you need to tweak something because you're working on a portrait? It doesn't. That's not actually useful feedback. It's not our criticism. It's just an opinion. Opinions are fine, but that's not what we're talking about here. We want to help you make the best art you can make. And getting quality feedback from people can really help you do that. Oops. I also know that we can feel nervous to speak up. And it doesn't matter how qualified or not qualified we feel we are, right? Like some, some people feel like they need a certificate, like they went to school or that um, they need to have spent more years working on their art before they are qualified to give other people feedback. But if you actually know the strategies and steps uh, by which to give someone feedback, it doesn't really matter how much experience you have. It's more about your, your, your frame is different. You're thinking about how can I be of service to this artist? What information do I read in their work that might help them make strong decisions about their art? And I'm going to have examples for you today. I know that even myself, when I was a student in university studying art, I felt nervous to speak up because I felt like there was a right or wrong thing to say. And, and it felt uncomfortable and weird and awkward. And that's part of what I want to um, get past here. So the first step for our community that I really want to be clear about is, where is it? Um, don't offer feedback if it's not asked for. This is the expectation I have for our group, and I know many of you have honored that. Just because someone shares their art inside our space here doesn't mean that they're asking you to tell them what's right or wrong with the work. We shouldn't assume anything. And in fact, for a lot of people, just sharing their artwork to this group is intimidating and scary and feels awkward and weird and is vulnerable. Let's honor people where they are. I think people feel like this is what it is like to receive critique or feedback, that we're going to be chopped apart and picked apart. Um, but I, I want you to understand you get to choose whether you have someone critique your work in this space by asking. And if someone has not asked, don't offer, because that could mean someone's not ready or even willing to take in that feedback. And really ask yourself, who does it serve? If you offer feedback that someone hasn't asked for, who does that serve? And I think we can all kind of have a giggle and laugh about it and think about how this applies to so much in our lives. As a new parent, 
Um, I think unsolicited advice is just like par for the course, right? Uh, I think often that applies to lots of parts of our lives and art is no different. I also encourage you to ask more questions if someone says something like feedback is welcome in this space. When I have answered those questions in the past, almost every time people are very defensive and uncomfortable and actually don't seem ready or willing to receive it yet. And my hunch is, is it's actually seeking validation. It's seeking affirmation that the work is great. And often people offer that out when the work is finished too. And that's not really an ideal time to get feedback on your work because if you feel like it's finished and then people are telling you things to fix in it or adjust, it can make you feel kind of insecure or uncomfortable with your work. And, and that is me as well. This, this, these are all things that I personally experience too. So think about when you ask for feedback, what's the right time? Is it almost finished? And then you can kind of give feedback and receive feedback from the work and kind of know what to do next. Um, and then if someone says something like feedback is welcome, I encourage you instead of to, um, instead of immediately responding and offering feedback, I encourage you to ask more questions. When we're specific about what we want feedback on, we get better information. And that's a point of advice for you giving and receiving. Okay. So if someone says feedback is welcome, have they really spent the time looking at their own work, asking themselves what needs to be fixed or what needs to be tweaked? When people spend that time and are like, you know, I think something's wrong with my composition or I know it's not finished, but I really can't see why. Well, that helps us know what kind of information that artist is looking for. We feel more of service and more confident to offer the feedback because we're not afraid of like stepping on toes or hurting someone's feelings. It's about creating boundaries by which we understand what the expectation is in terms of communication right? What does this person want from me? How can I help them? How does it go back and forth? And I want to note, it's completely okay to seek validation and approval about your art. But let's just be honest about it. If, if you're sharing work and you say feedback is welcome, but you really mean, I'd love you to tell me what's going well with my work, which actually is a form of critique and feedback, it's just one part of it, then, then say that. It's completely okay to say, I need to hear only what's going right with this work. Create the boundaries by which people operate with you and interact with you and your art. And you get to do that here. You just need to communicate and tell people what you need. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say about that? Um, let's talk about that kind of seeking specifics. Okay. Did I change... I don't know if I changed the slide here. Yeah, it looks like I did. Okay. So what do I mean by being specific in feedback? Uh, this can be look at colors, look at your line quality. What kind of composition do you have? What techniques have you used in your art? The best way you can help yourself kind of move through this, both yourself looking at your work and asking for help, as well as offering it to others, is by using the elements and principles of art. There are our building blocks. That's actually how we make all of our art. People only really think about the medium if they're working in acrylic or watercolor or pastel or clay, but that's actually material where the real tools that we use to make our art and say something are the elements and principles of art. So you can use them as a checklist and ask yourself, is texture important to this work? Is line quality, how do I, how, how am I using color? Is there a sense of harmony in the work? Does it feel discordant? You know, these are the things we can like look through to reflect on our own work and start asking other people questions about our work to get a read on what's working and what isn't. And I want to emphasize, it's okay to not ask for corrections. It depends on where you are with your work and what your goals are. Um, if you are really building your skill and, and you're interested in courses like Self-Taught, Self-Confident, my class on building art foundations and really kind of drawing foundations, one reason I created that program is because a lot of people say when they say they can't draw, it means that they can't draw realistically. That's kind of what they're, that's the translation. So 
if you're working on something like that and it's really important, you know, you're doing a portrait where it's really important that you capture the likeness of this person, well then you can post the image reference and what you're working on and ask people what's going right, what have I done wrong here, what measurement is off or is the eye in the wrong spot, right? You can ask those kinds of questions to get support. At the same point in time, you don't have to get them if you're not ready or you're feeling vulnerable because you get to decide what your art is about and what's important to you. Just because you're working from a photo reference doesn't mean you have to copy it verbatim, so to speak. You don't have to copy it exactly square for square. You get to decide what you take from an image reference and how you interpret it. And you don't put, when you frame and showcase an artwork, you don't frame it and put it next to a framed photo reference that you worked with. No one sees that, only you know. So again, think about what's right for you and be honest about it with yourself and with people that you're, you're seeking feedback from. So here's an area where I'm going to start showing you examples of how you could talk about the work. And in the future, I'd very much prefer to use your work. So if you would like to get some feedback on your work in the future, we can use it as an example inside this workshop. And it would be in a similar vein as what you're seeing here. But it does mean you'll need to post it to the group about a month from now when I announce the next version of this workshop. So here, um, I am looking at the face of the woman kind of closest to us on the wall. And here I might say something like, your line quality makes me think you want this work to feel loose, relaxed, and free. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong with it. I'm not telling you whether I like it or if it sucks. You know, I am saying, I read this meaning into the work. You get to decide whether that's the meaning you intend for the work and you really want to emphasize it and keep pushing that idea. So that means you're on track or you could be like, Oh my gosh, that's not what I meant at all for this piece. How many people are reading it this way and then decide what you're going to change in the work because people seem to not read exactly what you were intending. That is the point of feedback and critique. Here, um, this is kind of, it looks like a scientific illustration or a naturalist's drawing of a flower. It's beautifully done. What I could suggest is something like this. If you, increase, if you increase the contrast in your values, right, so that there's kind of stronger lights and darks, that would add more drama to the work. It's not needed. Maybe this illustration doesn't need any drama. Maybe they don't want drama. Maybe they want it to feel calm and relaxed because the natural environment that they were in when they were observing it was those things. Again, you can see this isn't a judgment. This isn't saying you have to do it this way or I know better than you about your art. It's looking at the work and interpreting it, reading it and suggesting alternatives that you might think about if you think it's an idea that might help them. Another kind of way to help yourself and others is to ask people to read stories into the work. So what emotions do you feel? Does it remind you or tell you some kind of story? So at this point, I'd love to know if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to um, remove this for now so you can just look at me. Um, I want you to watch this at your own pace and in the comments offer uh, questions that you might have, um, insecurities or vulnerabilities that you feel around feedback or your work that we can discuss in future workshops. But really kind of the long and short of this is, is feedback and critique is about trying to give you information that helps you decide what's the best next step for your work. It's best to ask for feedback before your artwork is finished so that you can apply it to the work and see that growth and learning in that work before it's finished. And you're more likely to feel receptive to the feedback because you haven't decided you've done your best and you're all and it's done. Um, it's wise to only offer feedback to people who have actually asked for it and that's the expectation inside this community space. Um, and when you ask for feedback, be specific. Don't just say feedback's welcome. Ask questions, say, you know, I want feedback. I want to know what I could be better at. I want to know what I could think about for the next piece. I want to know a certain technique for a work. And if you're not sure where to start being more specific, 
go look up the elements and principles of art and you can use them as a starting point and checklist to have this discussion. And not only is that helpful for you asking questions about getting feedback for your art, if you are nervous and wanna practice offering feedback to others, this is a great way to do that. What else did I wanna say? Um, another summary here. Make sure that you celebrate the things that are going right in your work. And some days we feel vulnerable and we're not ready to receive criticism that's talking about what's wrong or needs fixing. So create that expectation and communicate it inside this space. Say, I want feedback on this work today, but I need it only to be about the good things right now. I'm not looking for anything that's going wrong with this work. Thanks. And if people don't respect that for some reason, don't worry, I have your back, that's my job. That's why I'm here, that's why I'm running and facilitating this space. I will correct, course correct people. You don't have to worry about doing that, that's my job. Um, you can notify me so that I can fix it if someone needs a little course correction, okay? Uh, what else do I wanna tell you? Um, in the future, we're gonna talk about something called DAIJ. That's one strategy for art critique that uh, I often used inside the classroom when I was teaching art. And what's that? There was one other thing I wanted to tell you about. Um, I think I just wanted to emphasize the fact that I'd love to have this kind of example and discussion using your work inside this space so that you get that kind of support and feedback as well. And I hope that you'll practice some of these strategies and think about how you can improve your feedback experience because it really is an integral part of developing and growing your voice and skill. There's research, uh, a book called Peak by Anders Ericsson that I highly recommend, talks about that people who see leaps in their skill and become more expert at something, they often have very strategic feedback from people who are their peers or are ahead of them so that they can take their ideas to the next level, so that they can take their technique and practice to the next level. And this is across all disciplines. So if that's important to you and that's something you want in your artist practice, feedback is super valuable for that to happen and is, is more effective then in getting you there faster. If art is completely about play, you have no qualms about whether you grow or don't grow and you just wanna enjoy the process, then you don't need feedback. And that's one reason we have boundaries that we're discussing here, because I want you to be able to do that and just celebrate your work too, if that's where you're at and that's all you want. And it's completely okay to, to enjoy your art life and, and just embrace that as well. So again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm gonna wrap up today's little workshop here and I will be hosting this again next month with those updates. So if you have any follow-up questions or any concerns or things that you've struggled with when we talk about feedback, let's talk about it. Post it in the comments below and we'll keep this conversation going. Have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will catch up with you soon. Bye guys.